Hi, this is Jason Thiel with the Downtown Winston-Salem Partnership, and I'm here with Mary Ann DiNapoli Milet. She's a very highly regarded artist. She has a shop here in the Arts District, and we're sitting here in her studio, and I wanted to share with you some of the inspiration that she's going to share with us about the murals that she's done. And so, Mary Ann, tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the history of some of the works that you've done in murals and how you got to Winston-Salem. Well, I started out uh, working in an anti-graffiti mural program in Camden, New Jersey, um, back in the 80s. And uh, my husband and I moved here the late 80s, about 1989, and I realized that Winston was a great city for arts. I became involved in um, the Sawtooth, teaching there, while I had young children. And then I received an emerging artist grant, which is now a regional artist grant from the Arts Council, and I was also asked to help them with the Artiva program and paint murals. So I got started painting murals through that, and also um, I did a memorial mural at a preschool for a little boy who was killed in an accident. Well, how many of the murals have you done in here in uh, downtown Winston-Salem? In downtown Winston-Salem, um, at one time, I think I had about 10 or 11 murals, but several of the buildings have been torn down. I did a mural on the Rainbow, which is now Christopher's, which mm -hmm. hasn't been torn down, but it's been sided over. So maybe in 100 years, somebody's <laughs> going to tear that off and see the mural. <laughs> and which ones can you see that are your work um, besides the Tree at Last mural on uh, Liberty Street? Which other ones can you see in downtown right now? Well, the mural on the Chronicle, the uh -huh. history of the black press, is one of my murals. Um, the mural on the CBS building on 4th Street, mm -hmm. which is a, a Hispanic mural, and also the mural on the downtown middle school, which is visible from Business 40. So that's fantastic. And I wanted to tell you, we followed the uh, Tree at Last mural on Liberty Street and its relocation from Trade Street. And I wanted to... Um, for you to share a little bit about how that started from its beginning and then I wanted to see if we could look at some of the inner messages on the mural and this will be something that as people are listening to this they can check out the uh, graphic as they're uh, looking at it on the internet. Well before I tell you about the tree at last mural I forgot I really should mention the mural on the side of my building on Trade Street which is a kind of a mural that um, celebrates Miller's department store because my landlord would be very upset <laughs> if I didn't include Miller's in there. Um, that's right on in the 600 block of Trade Street. Um, but the Tree of Trade, which was, it was done on Trade Street originally and it was done with some hidden pictures and then because it wasn't hung um, properly it started to deteriorate. So we got grant money to redo the mural, but in the meantime the building um, was vacated and the tenant, the landlord didn't want us to redo the mural on that building. So we moved it to Liberty Street after about a year, which is how we came up with the, the name for the tree, because it took us so long to get it moved. And tree at last, when it was redesigned, um, there were some things that I put in that were very relative to Trade Street and it was kind of done as like a highlights, the children's magazine, hidden pictures. So in the tree there are a lot of hidden pictures. A um, couple of the hidden pictures are uh, memorials to Kelly Peterson who was one of the founders of the Downtown Art District Association and she died in 2009 so this was a tribute to her. Um, there are also some other little parts in the tree, if you really look at it. There's our Dada logo, and they were the sponsors for the mural. Um, there's a, a plate with a fork and knife that represent the restaurants, and there's also, a, um, I think there's a martini in there to represent the bars, and there's also a coffee cup to um, represent some of the uh, coffee shops that we have down here. But there are also little elements of art. There's a paintbrush, and there are... Um, is an easel, and I think there's a shuttle for weaving, and some pottery. So there's a, a lot of um, different things that represent parts of the art district. 
Well, that is fantastic, Marianne. And I have to tell you, this is such a great time. And I wanted to come and get some of the uh, words from yourself so that people can hopefully come by and look at the murals that you've done and the tremendous contribution that you've had on the city. And I think some of the fun part is I'm going to go over and look at the picture right now and check out some of these uh, some of these murals and some of the hidden messages. And, and before we go, I wanted you just to share a little bit about maybe some of the projects that are coming up for you. Okay, one other quick thing about the tree. Um, it was also, it was painted during the Summer on Trade concerts, and a lot of people came by and helped paint it. But if you look at the very top of the tree, it's all people's handprints. So people came by and just put their handprints in the top. You have to look closely to find them. I remember them. that, and I, I remember seeing that in, in person, and it was a lot of fun. So a lot of, hopefully a lot of participants in that process will maybe get a chance to see this audio and check it out. I hope they will. I actually had somebody come by and, and ask me what happened to the tree that was on Trade Street, so maybe they'll come by and find the new one. Um, but And I also heard that the tree is going to be in the scavenger hunt, which ah. is coming up. So <laughs> people will get a chance to find some, some hidden pictures in there through that. Um, right now I've been working on a new project called POWER, which is People of Winston-Salem Art Reclamation Program, and it's a public art program where we work with students and also communities to um, help educate people about gang awareness and also to kind of redirect kids from getting involved in graffiti vandalism. And um, it's a public art program where people participate in creating murals in their own communities in downtown. And we're just kind of getting off, just kind of moving, putting it together right now, but it's a really exciting program. Well, thank you very much, Marianne, and um, I look forward to uh, more of your work, and thanks for doing this. Well, thank you, Jason. I hope that was okay. Oh. Speak off the cuff sometimes.